Learning a brand new platform and especially a brand new strategy can be a bit nerve wracking when you're first getting started. Luckily for us, Thinkorswim offers a great solution to that in the form of paper money. This is going to allow us to trade pretty much anything in real time and get some practical experience without having to put our real money on the line. It's essentially like we're trading with Monopoly money, but with the real stock market. So today we're going to go through the entire process of opening up a trial paper money account, how to then access it, and a few quick examples of the types of trades that you'll be able to place. I first want to mention that if you already have an account with TD Ameritrade and soon to be Schwab, you will automatically have a paper money account attached to it. To access it, you would simply need to open up the Thinkorswim app, but if you don't have that, just go ahead and open up the App Store, then go ahead and search for it. From there, you would simply need to find the Thinkorswim app in the list, download it, and then open it up. From there, you would simply type in the exact same user ID and password that you normally use to log into your TD Ameritrade account, but if you're already logged into the app you've already used it in the past and you just need to flip over to pay for money, you can do that by looking in the main navigational tab at the very bottom and clicking on the More button. Within that menu, we would then just click on the button in the upper left that currently says Switch Account. Right at the top here, you're going to be able to flip between paper money or your live trading account, and you could also flip between the multiple different accounts that you have access to. You could have multiple live accounts, multiple paper money accounts, and this is how you'll flip between them. Now, for those of you who don't have an account with TD right now and you just wanted to give the Thinkorswim platform a try or paper money a try without having to open a real account, they do also offer a trial version. To create a trial paper money account, we could either head directly to papermoney.thinkorswim.com or just pull up Google and then type in think or swim paper money. Then go ahead and scroll down and click on it in the list right here. That'll take us immediately to a very simple application where we can first specify that we do not currently have an account with TD Ameritrade. We could then go through here and fill out the application, specifying our user ID, our password, and scrolling down, we will have to fill out the rest of the application below, but really you could put anything in here, it doesn't really matter. And then once done at the very bottom, we would simply hit that big submit button. After that, the account has been created and we'll simply need to open up the Thinkorswim app on our phone, or if you haven't downloaded it yet, go ahead and go to the app store, download it, and then open it up. We'll just need to make sure that we do have it flipped over to paper money right at the top here and then go ahead and type in that user ID and password that we just created and then hit the login button. Once in, you can see here I'm taken immediately to the overview page and if I look down here below, you can see I currently have over $200,000 in this account to play with. Of course, that is completely fake, but now we can go ahead and buy stock, options, futures, or even Forex. I actually go really in depth on how to trade within here on many other videos on this channel, but just to give you an idea of how it's done, to access any stock or option, future or forex pair, we simply need to come up to the search box in the upper right hand corner. From here we can then type in exactly what it is we want to trade, and in this case let's just go ahead and begin by buying a simple stock position, and we'll go ahead and type in Apple or AAPL, I'll then simply click on it in the list below. It'll then immediately take us to a stock profile page that shows us a bunch of great info about Apple, like what it's currently trading for, a chart down here of its recent price history, and most importantly, two big buttons in the upper right hand corner to actually buy or short the stock. So going through a quick example, if we wanted to buy some shares of Apple stock right now, we'll just hit that big green buy button up there. We'll then get an order ticket where we can then specify exactly how many shares we want to buy, the price we want to pay, and what order type we want to use. So in my case, we'll leave it set as a limit order. I'm going to say I only want to buy, let's say, 25 shares right now, and I only want to buy it if Apple goes down to, let's say, 135 a share. Now that I'm happy with that, I will simply come up to the upper right hand corner where it currently says review. I'll then get a little order confirmation just to make sure everything looks right, and since it does, I'll go ahead and hit paper trade in the upper right hand corner. From there, we can see the order has been submitted, and right here it immediately takes us to the orders page, where right here I can see my open order to buy those 25 shares of Apple at 135. If we instead wanted to do the exact same thing but on a futures contract, we would just go back up to the search box in the upper right hand corner. 
We'll then just need to type in the symbol. And for this one, let's say we wanted to purchase a S&P mini contract, which in thinkorswim, everything starts with a forward slash if it's a future and then ES. Hitting the done button in the lower right hand corner will immediately take us to the profile page for this particular futures contract. And just like before, if we wanted to buy it, we'll just hit that big green buy button in the upper right. From there, we'll just fill out the order ticket just like before. I want to buy one contract. I only want to buy it if it goes down to, let's say, 3550. And now that I'm happy with that, I'll just come back up here to hit review and hit paper trade once again to actually submit it. From there, we are again taken to the orders page, and you can see I've currently got orders selected at the very bottom down here. And right now, I've got that open order to buy the 25 shares of Apple, as well as that S&P mini contract. Now, in order for us to track all of our open positions, like the things that we currently hold, we would simply need to come down here to the positions tab at the very bottom. From here, we can see both my open positions, like in this case, Google, it currently says I have 100 shares. And if I hit the little arrow next to Meta, it also says I have two of the 125 puts. What I can also see is my open orders to buy the shares of Apple, because it currently says I have zero shares. And if I open up the ES minis, you can see I also have zero contracts of that as well. Now, whenever the time comes that you actually want to close out one of these positions, you want to sell to close it or buy to cover it, you would simply hit the little check mark box to the left of the thing that you want to close. So in this example, if I wanted to sell those meta puts that I currently hold, I would just hit that little check mark box to the left of it. Then within that little menu that appears, I would hit the close selected button. It'll immediately build out an order ticket to close out the entire position using a limit order, but I could of course adjust any of this, whether I wanted to flip it to a stop order or a stop limit, or if I set it back to a limit, I could also come down here and specify the exact price I wanted to sell these puts for. Once you're happy, you would just come up here to the review button, and then again, just hit paper trade to actually submit it. But those are the basics of how to open up a paper money account and how to place a trade within there. Hopefully you all end up finding paper money as useful as I have over the years. It is an excellent way to get started and learn before you put any of your real money on the line. Now, if you do still have questions or any other topics that you'd like me to discuss, just let me know down below. And in the meantime, I think you'll find this next video helpful as well. So go ahead and check it out. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week and I hope to see you all on the next one.